train the muscles, not the joints. What cemetery we are, we can do it. And you can do it. Absolutely, you can do it. And uh, hopefully, with this atmosphere that we are in and motivation. And yeah. Yeah. You do the funniest things too, the way they kind of, you know, their expressions and shit, like, yeah. they change, they're never the same, they're not always the same, you know, like, yeah. all of a sudden they do something that's so unexpected. <laughs> it's a volume tonight, it's a big volume, man, big volume tonight, big volume, Wayne. What are you laughing at? Hey, what are you laughing at? Big volume, big volume. Welcome back to another Natural Galant bodybuilding vlog and big volume. That's the thing today, big volume. I'm gonna be doing some chest, back, and biceps and big volume, man, big volume, yeah. So if you're wondering who the guy was in the beginning, that's the owner of the gym, Steve. So some of you guys have been wondering what the guy is uh, walking around in jeans or whatever and working out. Well, that's him, yeah. He can wear anything he wants because he owns the gym. And then uh, the guy giving us the thumbs up in the beginning, that was Anthony. So shout out to Anthony, man. Shout out to Anthony. So anyway, you guys, I'm gonna be doing uh, a lot of warm-ups here, uh, two or three warm-ups of bench. And I'm going to be working my way into 275 for multiple sets. And I also just made that track in the background. It's called Blade. Okay? Yeah, Blade. That's the music. Here it is. It's like, you got like the patented Wayne training system. How to train front delts with any exercise right now, right? You want cars, you want boats, you want success, you want big delts? Take my program. Wayne's, Wayne's delt training program. Awesome. We can market that, Wayne. We can market that. The front delt training program. <laughs> Train calves and front delts at the same time. So people ask me sometimes, do you keep track? Do you write things down? Right there, I did 12 reps, two, 275. Usually I get about 16 when I'm training more frequently and I'm not dieting at all or not cutting weight. So I've cut down now. I'm not super shredded, but I'm leaner than before. And as long as I'm sitting at this lean weight, it's kind of difficult for my bench to go up, right? And I've talked about this in other videos about how sometimes you're heavier, but you're not necessarily stronger, but you can move more weight, you know what I mean? because you're more stabilized and uh, you have a different groove. When the weight's not moving you because you're a little bit heavier, it doesn't take as much energy to lift the weight, right? But anyway, it's just a fucking excuse, honestly, isn't it? I just, just a bunch of excuses, honestly. Yeah, I'm a pansy. Hey. Ziffy. That was a lot. That was an iffy one. I'm gonna give myself two minutes here. I'll do another set. High volume, high volume. Two minutes. So now that I'm doing higher volume with the same frequency, this is kind of a, actually a little bit less frequency because I'm just doing two day split right now. But I'm doing about 10 sets per body part. So you'll notice that sometimes your strength will change or shift around because maybe your triceps are dead from the day before or shoulders or whatever. And then you go to do 10 sets of chest and you're like, maybe not fully recovered or not. 
But again, it's, it's just about playing around and seeing what the body adapts to. And it seems like my body's liking the higher volume uh, from a hypertrophy point of view for sure, right? So that's really what I'm after is to build muscle and to build strength. Sometimes it takes a period of time before your body adjusts. It's also interesting to note that with high volume, your body becomes very coordinated when it comes to handling the heavier weight. It uh, just really gets you a chance to hone that groove, okay? And when you hone that groove, then you can push the muscles more because you're not fighting coordination anymore. So it's kind of like a powerlifting technique in some way. So doing volume from time to time is very effective and that's why I'm doing it now. Right, one more, one more. After moving from flat bench, I went over to incline. So I did some incline barbell press and I go back and forth between incline barbell and incline dumbbell. Okay, so any of you guys that uh, are wondering which one's best, I can't really tell you to tell you the truth. It just each one will hit different parts. And some people swear by dumbbells. They say dumbbells are the only way to build chest. And some people say bench press with barbells is the only way to do it. So I say both, do them both. Why not, right? More is better. Hey, why not? So I just mix them up with different workouts. And Troy, if you're listening out there, cause Troy made a comment today and uh, underneath one of my videos, and he asked if you can gain a chest without bench pressing. Now I'm assuming he's talking about barbell bench press. So if you are talking about that, yes, you can get a chest through doing dumbbell type bench press movements. And if you're asking about pressing period, then yes, I think you can get a chest if you just do fly type of movements, although I wouldn't recommend it. I would think that that would be a harder way to do it. Uh, there's a reason why bench presses are kind of tried and true and it, you know, most people do them, whether they're bodybuilders or uh, powerlifters or whatever, but bodybuilders tend to use a lot of bench press type techniques, whether it's with dumbbell, barbell, or whether it's a machine press of some sort. Uh, and the reason why pressing works well is because when your chest hits failure, you can still get a few extra reps by using that tricep. See, that's the thing about high volume, right? Even at about three or four sets, it's usually when I have a critical drop off point for reps. So the device is a bench that I come to incline and I'm weaker because, you know, that's all she wrote, right? But it's the thing I'm trying to push into that fatigue to get the muscle to adapt, to store more carbs, to store more glycogen and creatine, and to also uh, get the different fibers that are still being active during this time to activate as well to gain overall muscle mass, right? Wayne's banished from the videos. We're gonna, it got out of control. But you see how he spotted me in chest? Do you see how he spotted me in chest just to get the video? I'm gonna digitize that. After inclines, I finished off with some dumbbell presses and I'm just going light on dumbbell presses, but I just want to feel that squeeze and just hit that last little bit of fatigue. Uh, the parts of the chest that I just didn't get on barbell bench press because I'm getting a little bit more of a squeeze with these dumbbells. So I'm just going to do a few sets of this. And of course I do start with warm ups as well because it is a different movement. So I do start with a warm up. Although my chest is nice and warm, I like to get it used to the new movement, okay? So a lot of people sometimes think they're warmed up, so they just do anything. They just try to do backflips and everything. It's, it's just good to warm up with every exercise you do just to do a practice run, okay? Just to make sure all the muscles are firing in the right order and in the right timing.
can see that that warm-up really paid off. See, you can really see how smooth the dumbbells are going up and down. It's just, uh, it's it's art. It's like art, art in motion, okay? So anyway, I'm moving up in weight here, just doing the 100 pound dumbbells. That's where I'm gonna stick to. And I just wanna get that squeeze, get that extra pump. And like I said, that's one thing I'm really loving about this volume is getting this extra pump that you don't usually get with lower volume, higher frequency type workouts. Although there's other benefits to higher frequency as well. So like I said, mix it up, mix it up. Well, as you can see, my chest is dead. My chest is totally dead. Nothing really left in there to push with, so time to move on to back. From chest, I went to train some back, and I started with my favorite exercise, which is bent over dumbbell row. I love bent over barbell rows. I love T-bar rows. I love machine rows. I love all sorts of rows, but dumbbell is my favorite just because you can really retract that spine. You can really retract those shoulder blades and get a lot of trap work, a lot of lat work, and you can really take that bicep out of the movement uh, really easily with dumbbells. Uh, the other thing is, is that it's a little bit easier on the lower back than barbell because you can slide the dumbbells up and down the sides of your legs. So the center of gravity is totally different than barbell. So this is another thing to consider for those of you out there that have uh, problems with your lower back or, or something like that going on. Okay. I did some heavy Romanian deadlifts yesterday, so bent over rolls the lower back is a little tight. person to tell you not to use the same technique all the time because you can burn out one pathway or another you know some people burn out the pathway of using too heavy a weight all the time some people burn out the pathway of doing too much volume all the time and some people burn out the pathway of frequency okay so uh, one thing I love about this high volume is I'm getting a different type of pump a different type of uh, access to different fibers but again if you do it all the time you will burn out that's why I like working out like a chef cooks you know sometimes you use different spices different types of materials you know sometimes you need carrots in your soup sometimes you need broccoli sometimes you need cauliflower sometimes you need more meat you know whatever it might be or the spices it's the same thing with your training programs and that's why i mix them up all the time in the training programs and mix up these different variables so that way you're not burning out one pathway or another so that's why it's great to be open-minded so this is a great time to use a machine after you've uh, done romanian deadlifts any before the lower back is a little tight after about three or four sets of bent over dumbbell rows it started to loosen up and stuff it started to feel pretty good but still, you know, because the lower back is a little bit fatigued, you know, pushing it for squats today would be a nightmare. You wouldn't want to do that, you know. Uh, you don't want to do heavy bent over rows after a day of Romanian deadlifts, or deadlifts that is. And so now I'm going to move on to some machine rows so that way my lower back doesn't become the weak link and I can really hit the upper back, right? So I take days off training lower back from time to time, especially when I'm doing high volume workouts. Okay, so I'm doing bent over rows. The day before I did stiff legged deadlifts. So my lower back is really burned out. So it's really important for me to implement some machines where I'm not using the lower back, but I can still push those other muscle groups to failure. So that's what I love about this exercise. I can just really concentrate on just pushing the lats and the traps just into absolute failure without worrying about my lower back not being able to stabilize the spine, right? Because remember your lower back hits failure and then you can get injured. So you don't want your lower back to hit absolute failure ever when you're stabilizing the spine. I find machines can work really well in tandem with your free weight workouts.
if you're wondering why I'm looking off screen from time to time, it's because somebody is off screen asking for the dumbbells. They're saying, hey, are you done with those? I want to use those for a set. Uh, when are you going to be finished? You know, that kind of thing. And of course, I'm doing high reps here. I'm doing like sets of anywhere from 20 to 40, 45 reps or something like that. And one thing I want to talk about is that I've been doing some higher reps with biceps. And I've actually mentioned this before, but just in case you haven't heard it, I'm enjoying it. I'm actually liking it. The high reps with the biceps just seems to really be keeping the stress on my biceps instead of uh, putting the stress on the instability of the shoulder injury that I have from hockey. So if you are not getting any sort of development in your biceps or triceps, try doing super high reps, like 50 reps, 60 reps for a period of time, and then doing the odd heavy workout as well. But you may notice that you shock the system or at least excite certain muscle fibers in those muscles to encourage growth. So constant tension, you know, I'm doing the lightweights. Of course, it's not very impressive, but I'm just trying to get that burn, that deep burn in there and just keep that tension on the muscles, right? That's why I keep the arms slightly bent at the bottom. And of course, you know, if you have an unstable shoulder, you're gonna have to keep your arms slightly bent just to keep the shoulder in place, right? Because the more stable the shoulder is, the more tension can stay on the bicep head. So a lot of times people don't really understand this. They seem to uh, think that a shoulder can be unstable and an elbow can be unstable and somehow the bicep is gonna get the most amount of uh, contraction. But you really want to stabilize those two joints as much as possible and sometimes it's not possible if you have injuries and things but that's why I keep the arm slightly bent because then the bicep crosses the shoulder joint and actually helps stabilize the shoulder joint so therefore the bicep starts to get extra work but anyway yeah tr try this out try yeah, just the constant tension high rep method and see you know even if you just want to finish off your workouts like this it's actually a really great way of getting that bicep uh, to contract and to grow now here I'm doing some 30 pound dumbbells and I'm just gonna get a set in here because you know I think the guy the bully of the gym he basically stole my light dumbbells and I cried for a little bit and then I rested and then I came back and said okay I'm gonna do a set with 30 pounders so anyway thanks a lot for you guys that have been watching this video and make sure you share my stuff because I know some of you guys aren't sharing my stuff you know it's, it's it's this internet thing now you know you can actually click share and uh, and make sure other people see the videos it's kind of like a new thing it's it's kind of like trendy kind of like uh, video games so anyway, thanks a lot. And if you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalandbodybuilding.com and take care for now. Mm -hmm.